All right, so as we open up our project in Notepad, we see the raw code. Remember, we need to then run. I'm going to run it in Firefox. I want to see what it looks like so far. For the first time, it might take a little moment to load up because what's happening is all of these external graphics are loading up from another server depending on various factors that may slow things down but eventually it loads up like this and our goal if you recall is going to look like vmcinc.net slash marvel we have all of the content the design is still missing lacking it's not quite there so eventually it'll look like this the last that we did, we worked on the the header. So our header looks like that. Eventually, we're going to choose a cool font. That font is not a default font on most computers. So we'll see how to add a font off of a server a little later. We put the background image with a little fade. What's coming up next is this nav bar. That actually looks like a nav bar. And cool effect of rolling over to look like tabs. Ours, at the moment, is behind the other content and it doesn't look like a nav bar yet. But we have a space for it up here somewhere. That's next. Then we'll work on the, on the actual article, which includes the figure, the fig caption, the H group, and the P, and sidebar and all of that. So the last code that we wrote, we had worked on header H1. The space here denotes basically you have some element called header, and inside of header you will find h1. This is how we can specifically target an element in h1. If we had only written h1, this would have affected every h1 on the page. And we may have more than one, and we don't want them all affected the same way. There's only one instance of h1 in this case, but we have a few instances of h2 and h3, and we may want them to look differently. So this is the specificity. We're more specific. We can have a general selector, any header, all headers. Here's more specific, this H1 in that header. After line 46, after your header H1, we'll say nav. The nav selector. And in CSS, what are we targeting? Curly braces, how are we changing it? Here we're going to say, well, there is a CSS property that is about the flow of our elements. Everything that follows gets processed in order. And sometimes we can break the flow. For the moment, we will use this property, and it'll make a little more sense a little later. Clear both. We can align things to the left and to the right, and here we're saying clear the alignment from both the left and the right from the preceding element. It's kind of complex to start off with, but we need to clear both based on the previous element. The height of this element. I want some space so that those links can inhabit that area to have their own space. Right now the nav links uh, are, are kind of floating behind elements. Clearing helps them get their own unique space. And then height gives us a space for those text elements, those nav elements, to exist. I want a background color to steel blue. Those nav buttons, I want them behind. I want them sitting on top of a background color, steel blue. I want that background color height of 2M, and I want that background element to clear the previous elements. The text color itself, white, white text on a steel blue background, that'll be good contrast, that'll be nice and readable. And then I want the 
text align center. I want those text elements to be centered on the screen. Centered in their element, that is, in their nav element. I think if we save it at this point, it doesn't look quite right yet. If we run it, yeah, not quite, but you see before and after, after there, we're starting to put a bar for it, and then the text aligned. It's still not quite there, but we're going to get there. Well, I want to do the same thing for the nav and for the footer. The footer down here is off on its own. Black text, white background. I also want that blue color. I also want the white color of text. I also want it aligned to the center. I want basically exactly what I wrote here for both nav and footer. One way to do it is to write another footer selector, copy and paste this. A more efficient way, we can say nav, comma, footer. Let's make a note here. We're saying apply the CSS to nav and footer with that comma. See these commas and the space in CSS is very important. And h1 inside of a header, that's the space. A comma, do this and that. If we had no comma, it would be apply the following to the footer inside the nav, which doesn't make sense. The footer is not in the nav. The footer is down at the bottom in the main body or somewhere. So here we can say apply this to the nav and the footer and the sidebar and whatever, simply separating with commas. If you save and run that, you should then see your footer also get that background color, aligning the text center, and the text itself becomes white. So there's my footer. Without the comma, the footer doesn't know to be affected. With the comma, the footer is also affected. It's very common to make a nav bar made out of bullet points. That's exactly what we did in the HTML section. <coughs> Let's see, we've got here nav, unordered list, UL, bullet points, a bullet point for the home link, a bullet point for heroes, etc. So our nav bar is made out of bullet points. We're then going to say nav space ul the space again. There's a bullet point list inside of a nav bar. Let's control it. There's some weird empty spaces. That's because margin we need to set to zero. The UL has some built-in spacing. We have either margin or padding. Remind me, what's the difference between margin and padding? Margin is outside. Mm -hmm. and padding is inside. Good. Margin is on the outside of the element. Padding is on the inside of the element. So here we've canceled out any space outside of it. Question? Um, you're trying to open my file in the network folder. My network folder is locked, so let's do a save as. And we can save it to your desktop. Yeah, 
thing is going to take me some 50 months to get here. Because that city would be much faster. So here we have nullified the built-in margin to the bullet points. We've set it to margin zero. What I also want to do then is tweak the padding a little bit inside of the element, inside of the bullet points. Uh, I want to get put, give myself a little breathing room. I'm going to do 0 0.25m space zero. What did it mean again when I've got two values of a padding? The uh, X and Y. Not quite. That relates uh, to like the drop shadow. The, uh, top, bottom. top bottom and left right. Top and bottom. First element is top and bottom. Second element is left and right. So here, give me a little bit of one quarter of a regular unit, uh, top and bottom, and then no, no extra spacing on the left and the right of the element of the bullet points. So this is tweaking, this is altering the default behavior of the bullet points. Which bullet points? The bullet points in the nav bar only. We may have bullet points elsewhere. Here we were specific. So we've already kind of said it, but I'll say it again here. S CSS specificity. Specificity. An element in an element. We're being more specific. Next line, nav, li. We're going to then affect each individual bullet point. Any bullet point in the nav will be affected, so forth. We could write this as well, nav, ul, li. That's even more specific. Either way would work. The difference why we may do the one as opposed to the other, is perhaps simply saving some typing time. So we're, here, we're saying in this way, the long way, a bullet point in an unordered list in the nav bar. Every list item basically is going to be in some unordered or ordered list, so it's a bit superfluous to be that specific, but we could. This should work the same. Any list item no matter if it's an unordered list or ordered list in the nav bar, let's affect it the following. Display in line. In CSS, we either have elements that are block level or inline level. So I'll say here, I guess we'll write it here. All, all, actually, H, HTML. All HTML elements are either block level or inline level. 
A block level element is an element that, that is greedy. It wants to take up all of the space that it can. In H1, for example, if you write the H1 tag right next to the P tag, H1 will basically push P tag down. H1 will want to take up all of the space there. It's a block level element. Some tags, like image, are inline level. You can put an image inside of a P tag and it will be fine. So imagine putting a P inside of a P. One will push the other one down. How do we know which are block, which are inline? Well, we need to really look at a, you know, a cheat sheet and all of that to memorize which is which. But I'll point it out as necessary. Here, for example, those bullet points. Did you see that each bullet point takes up its own line? We wrote a bullet point. It's one item. We wrote another. We didn't have to write the break. We wrote list item home, list item villains, list item heroes, and they automatically broke. List items are block level elements. Here we're then doing its opposite nature. Make these bullet points on the same line. Keep them on one line like a real nav bar. So display inline is to force them to stay on one line. I'll make another comment down here. <coughs> can obviously keep making that comment multiple lines and saying force a block level element the list item into an inline level element If you save and run it, they're on one line. Just a moment ago, they were block level elements. Now they're on the same line. I've also cleaned up that empty space up there because of margin. No empty space up there. This is not quite lining up there just yet. We'll deal with that in a moment in a variety of ways. But now we've got these elements here in line. They're a little too close. So with more CSS, we can separate them out. And maybe also put a little divider between them. More CSS. So next line, I'm still inside the list item, the nav list item. We're going to say here, here's a trick, uh, border dash right. We had border for the wrapper. If we simply call it border, on all four sides, we'll get the same border. We can specify border right border dash right, border dash top, border dash bottom, border dash left. We can specify each individual side of the invisible box that is around every element. Two pixels, space solid, space midnight blue. So to the right of every bullet point, which is now in line, you will get a little vertical line. The space around them is still too tight, so padding dash left, 1M, padding dash right, 1M. So a little breathing room to the left and to the right of each bullet point. And to the right of the bullet point, a line, a visual line that divides the elements. I guess we could have also written that as one declaration, as in padding, and then we do auto 1M. That'd be one. So an automatic amount of padding on the top and bottom, left and right, one. Here we specifically did padding left, padding right. I'm just showing you sometimes one way to do it, another way to do it. I'm going to keep it with both explicitly set, just because I may want to do on the left side, give me two 
units of space, and on the right side, give me one. Um, the the short the shortcut shorthand might not have resulted in the same thing. Save and run that, just to see how your nav bar is taking shape. Yes. Let's see here. Relevant. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
All right, so at this point we have, or we should have, the uh, an element at the top starting to look like this. Uh, eventually it's going to have tabs and all of that, uh, but that's what we've got so far uh, up on the nav bar. Uh, in order for these effects to happen, we need to start to deal with these various states. Any link, uh, by default, is just going to look like a plain old underline. But with CSS, we can do the effects of when you put your mouse over, they change color. Well, using borrowing that same feature, we can make it more interesting with these tabs. That's just a little graphical bit of CSS. That's a background color with a rounded corner and such. So to further refine this, nav list item, next line, nav space list item space A. This one we are being pretty specific. A tag, what does that one do again? Anchor link. Anchor link. So we're saying if there's a link inside of bullet points, inside the nav bar, do the following. In this case, we should be that specific because we may have other links in the nav bar uh, and we don't want to affect them the same way. So uh, here, first of all, what we'll say is some padding to further separate the elements a bit more, 0.5m. The color of the text will be white. Text-decoration color of text, text decoration, none. The default since the beginning, 1989, of links was an underline before the, I mean, underneath the text. We don't want that decoration. We don't want that underline on our links. We want to make a nicer looking link, and the underline is not going to look nice. So what that did was, there's before, there's after. Further space things out a little bit, remove the underline, turn the text white. Now the white on the steel blue looks nice. When it was the normal link color on the blue, it's a little harder to read. So white on blue is nice to read, a little bit of space between, no underline. So text decoration none removes underlines. We've been seeing that we can, these, these are all built-in tags that we are redefining. Things that have a dot, or later on a hashtag, hash mark, are classes or IDs that we invent. Um, there's also a couple of special selectors that get attached to other elements. One of them is about a hover. When you roll your mouse over an element, that's the hover state. Uh, there's the link before you interact with it. There's the link when you hover over it. So we have to specify, what does this look like when we hover over a link? The syntax for that. We'll say nav list item a colon hover. No space separating this. Space here, space here, yes. A link in a bullet point in the nav. When you hover, colon, no space.
we have hover, which ones do we have? We have hover, visited, active. We've got a few states that exist. We can customize every single element of our links. When you hover your mouse over, make it look like this. At the moment that you click on it, when it's active, do that. After you've clicked on it one time and it's been visited, do the following. So the syntax for that is this. This is known as a pseudo class. Very technical. It's just something to memorize. Pseudo. Let's spell pseudo. Pseudo class for when you hover over a link. No space. If we were to put a space, this is a very common error to make. It kind of still makes sense, but now that space assumes this element is in this element in this element, and not really. It has to be with no space right there. There's a link while we hover in a bullet point in the nav. We're going to say background color. I'm kind of I'm gonna sort of uh, make it stand out white. Uh, color of text, midnight blue. I'm kind of reversing the colors. There's a midnight blue back there, and. Actually, a steel blue. Uh, yeah, steel blue. We had a behind in the nav. We have a steel blue background, and I'm kind of reversing it here now. Uh, make the background of the hover element white, and then make the color of the text steel blue. We're reversing it. If you run that, and you hover, you get this effect, this rollover. So you hover your mouse over them, they they reverse. It's a common thing to do. <coughs> you have a certain background color and a certain text color, then when you've got hover, you reverse them. It gives you visual interest. It kind of looks nice already that way. It kind of looks nice in that you hover over and it's like the uh, the white of the main body flows into that element. To make it a little nicer, with a little bit more like rounded corners, we can make like a tab shape. And then with a little bit of drop shadow, we can further make it look like it's standing off of the page. What color did you reverse them? Like here, white and steel blue. Yes? I'll help you just one moment. Let me uh, finish my thought here. Okay. Make sure your your code looks exactly like mine. Just one moment. Uh, so to finish the uh, effect here. Um, we can do border dash top dash left dash radius. We have just as a comment here, we have border dash radius. And this one will allow us to put rounded corners around all four corners of the element we have four corners to every element. Border radius 25 px, for example, would put roundness of 25 on all four corners. Here is the explicit way to say on the top left, we'll only do a little bit 5px. And then on the top right, border dash uh, top 
dash right dash radius five pixels. For the radius, we put the equal amount on all four corners. I believe you can specify with spaces how you want it. That one's, I think, a lot more values to put because we have the, the four corners. Here's the explicit way. Border top left, border top right. Radius. Five pixels each. Save it and run it. Got it? Okay. So then when I see that result and I hover over, rounded on the top edges only. If I want it more round, I can increase that 5, 10, 15, whatever. It's looking good, but it doesn't look quite three-dimensional yet. We can add a drop shadow to just about any element. say 